Should I run the camera on you or me? You. <laughs> Darn it. Making a lot of noise over here. Just sitting down on the job, are we? Just a melted mess right there. Let us know, let us know, let us know. It's literally raining. Good morning, sheep fans. I'm standing in front of the uh, feed bag situation here, and we're getting to the very, very end of first cut, which would have been harvested in, oh, late May, early June. Likely June. This is second cut, and then third cut's behind it, closest to the barn. So what I'm going to do is open up this bag and grab the remaining uh, few buckets there. I usually put it right in front of here, and as we're as we're getting new feed from this guy, it should incorporate into the uh, into the second cut. So then there's a blend of both. Um, I I try to do that as much as I can. Uh, any big change in feed is a little bit stressful on the sheep. I mean, it's the same feed, but it's just a different, probably different moisture, uh, different protein levels. Uh, so it's just a little trick that I kind of do. So I'm going to work away at that this morning. And then this afternoon, we actually are going to start vaccinating and hoof trimming that, uh, that group that we just sheared the other day when Charlie was here. So I always think that I'm going to have a slow week and then the week happens and I'm like, oh, I got a bunch of stuff on my planner. So I guess that's why we do that. Guys are getting big. Oh my goodness. Why are you so big? You guys look good. Look at those bottle babies. Loving the hay. Hey. Hi. You look gorgeous. So I don't know if you guys remember last video I was telling you I had like these little bite marks. The wool getting pulled out from these ewes. Freckles has it pretty bad. Come here Freckles, show the people. So this isn't from shearing, this is actually other sheep. So her scratching some of it and other sheep actually pulling the wool right off your back. What do you think of that? Hey? You'll be happy it's a little warmer today. I'm uh, just checking our very organized shelves for some fittings to tie off that hose that blew off the tap the other day and caused a leak. I'd like to be able to run that water line for when I have my next group of lambs because when I, when I go to ship them, I put them on that side and right now that side, the water is shut off. I think it might be a trip to town because I don't think we have enough parts. I'm gonna check across the road first. is dried up. Uh, you know what I was doing, so I have the fitting, the nipple goes in here, and then I got the top, and then 
then I got up and walked. So I think what happened is the tap froze and then split. I do have some stuff over here. Oh, look at this. Do I have this? Do I have a plug? Hmm. I guess I'm we'll going to town. I might get just a spare, this and a plug, just in case. All right, all right. Just got back from town. Um, I did buy a spare just in case this one was leaking. I think it's brand new, but I never know if I just reuse some. So I have this, and I bought the plug, and I did buy Teflon, but. I really love this stuff. I can use that instead of this one. So I'm going to try. I don't know how much I have of this stuff left. So um, I'm going to get these all together. assistant, my trusty assistant with us. We are once again doing a clostridial vaccine and hoof trimming these ewes that are due in March. So we vaccinate about four to six weeks before lambing begins. I like, I aim for that six week. Hope I'm not too early. I think at six weeks exactly, today or tomorrow. And last week they got sheared and that's usually step one. It makes them a little slicker to go through my squeeze chute. They are gonna go through a squeeze chute. I get a lot of anger towards this. Um, it is made specifically for hoof trimming and it's made specifically for sheep. We get it done fairly quick. I have these Infaco hoof trimmers. They're battery operated. Uh, the battery is telling me that it's almost dead, and which is funny because it was on the charger. So we're going to do that, but Carissa is going to be my vacci vaccination uh, technician. So she is going to be treating anything that was born 2019 or earlier with Glanvac, and that protects from uh, clostridial, and it also uh, protects from CL, which is those big bumps that some of my ewes get. Uh, my older ones weren't on that program, so I'm just kind of trying to age my way through that, and uh, the other ones will just get the Tazvax, the original vaccine that they got vaccinated with as, as ulams. And then their protection, their immun immunization should go through their colostrum and into their lambs, and they will, it will offer protection to, um, it'll offer protection to those babies when they're born. Did I miss anything? I mean, you could recite this for me. <laughs> she's too shy. I don't think she's shy at all. I think she just pretends. All right, are you ready for this? I'm not. Should I run the camera on you or me? You. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, before we get started here, I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna do because once I get going, I don't, I wanna go pretty fast. I don't want them upside down for too long because they are pregnant. Um, I'm going to be taking just the, t the tips off the nails like this and then uh, what th their little nails tend to curl when they grow so I'm just 
I'm just trimming off the edges and trimming off the, uh, the very tip. These guys were just done. It's been three, two or three months, so we're on a pretty good schedule now. Without the wool. Nice. I wonder what she's. Is it a bird under there? I don't know. What's the matter, Lucy? Go see what she's doing. Making a lot of noise over here. What? There's nothing there. I guess there was something there. <laughs> it was a bird. What is that? There's about a thousand more you can try to get. Sitting down on the job, are we? You comfortable? Hmm? <laughs> what are you doing? Is that fun? You look like a doggie. How about we get to work here? Hmm? Her hands are dirty too. Good. Forgot one, Kins. Not a girl. We uh, just did that in record time. We did 48 U's in like. Uh, in like two hours. I don't think we've ever been that quick. I thought I was, I thought I'd be lucky to get 30 done. So that was a great day. I had a really good, I've had a couple really good, I mean, I always have a good day with Carissa, but I've had a really good few days. Uh, today being one, we've just been laughing and talking and I think it's because I don't see a lot of people anymore. Just, just Mark, <laughs> who I adore. Uh, but he's away this week. He's ice fishing with my brother-in-law. Anyway, it's either that or I have not been picking up my phone. I've just been working and it's felt really good. Well, I, I use my phone all the time for work, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, so I just find it's one of those things that uh, when I can put it in my pocket and forget about it for like a day or even a an afternoon, I'm just, I just feel so good. Today's warming up. My barn is flooded. This side anyway, can you see? I don't know if you can see that water. That's all water. The other side is completely bare. This side, the sun is melting the snow on the ledge outside and the ice on the inside and it's just a melted mess right there. And I would clean it up, but it's supposed to be really mild again tomorrow and then we're supposed to get a blizzard. So I think I'm gonna leave it until um, I know it's gonna freeze and then I'll give it a good clean up so we don't slip on ice. Um, I'm just checking my my planner to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, the one thing I did forget to do, I fixed that tap across the road, but I forgot 
to see if it actually worked. <laughs> so I'm going to either do that yet this afternoon or I'll do it in the morning. There's some odd jobs I kind of want to do in the morning while Chris is doing chores. And then we are going to just basically, this day will be on repeat for the next probably three or four days until we get all these hooves uh, trimmed. I will say this, changing my hoof trimming calendar has been entirely because of you guys calling me out. Uh, I remember I used to be very sad. I have some pretty mean people telling me that uh, that I needed to be trimming my hooves more than once every nine months. And I'm like, really? And I started researching it actually, because sometimes I'm just like, sometimes I get defensive. I'm like, I'm doing, I know I'm doing this enough. I'm, I'm pretty sure I am because a lot of other sheep farmers I've talked to do it once a year, but a lot of those sheep farmers are outdoor sheep farmers. So they don't need to even trim them near as much as me. So when I was doing some investigating, um, it did say you should be trimming your hooves like every three to five months, basically, if they're inside. I'm like, oh, so I do give you guys credit for me um, pulling my head out of the sand and changing this hoof trimming schedule because it's been a game changer. That and getting these trimmers, those Infaco trimmers have just been, it's just made the job enjoyable. I cannot believe how much doing it more often has sped up the process. So I do thank you guys for calling me out on that one. Um, <laughs> the nice ones, that, that is. Lucy's got a full belly of hoof trimmings. gonna say good morning everyone but it's it's noon hour I just had a quick early lunch um, I have to get this telehandler actually put in the shop right now because my windows getting fixed and it has to I guess it has to uh, sit in kind of a heated area for a while I don't know if it's to seal it or what but anyway putting this in here and I also have to replace a little breather valve for the hydraulics for this uh, for this big uh, boom loader boom here Tom my bobcat guy showed me how to do it the other night so I am I'm just gonna put everything in here and I'll work away at that I guess to try to do here is there's a little breather cap right in here yeah that's where it is but there's a whole bunch of uh, haylage and manure and bird nest and stuff here so I'm gonna just blow this out so it doesn't go inside this hole when I go to um, change this I think I've got it clean out I don't know why manufacturers put things where I can't get in to clean it out. Ew, lots of stuff. Come on. Old. New. This is not the easiest. Seriously. Tom, why did you make me do this? I got it and it took a long time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so I was afraid of this. Uh, today is mild, uh, today and yesterday, and we've been in a deep, deep freeze. And uh, today is above zero Celsius. 
So um, the roof has had like a sheet of ice snow covering kind of even on the inside and it's melting now. So my sheep are going crazy. <laughs> well, this is the center alley. Snow. Um, I never really showed you guys what we were using. So this is the gland vac. That's what we're using for the younger use. And that gives that dual protection of the uh, CL. And then we're using good old Tazvax for the older use. Um, I do have spares here. There's a new guy. So that's the tools of the trade. Let us know, let us know, let us know. Honestly. See how much they uh, freak out. You don't want Are you guys bored of this yet? So uh, we won't run the camera very long. Um, Carissa is doing the same thing. She's doing the vaccination and I am doing the dirty spa day. Dirty feet. Toe jam. Oh, it's your favorite you coming up. Carissa's favorite you is the little black one. You can see her face right there. She loves that you. Smells like apple juice. <laughs> Never drinking apple juice again. Well, this is getting dangerously close to my wool, and I don't have my wool up on a skid. Oh, I better get this. Yeah, I better get this up. So I have them above water for now, all on skids, but I mean, it's literally raining. There, I put a little roof on them. <laughs> I think I'm gonna maybe clean this up a bit for Carissa. Cause I don't want it to freeze. Ugh. All right, see this works. Look at that nice dry barn. I'm golden. You can see no leaks. I'm assuming this is thawed. Yep. Awesome. 